Adobe just added an incredible new Lightroom update that has the potential to up-level our color toning game as portrait and wedding photographers. How does it work? How does it incorporate into your current editing workflow? And does it replace the power duo of curves and HSL? Let's find out in this video all about Lightroom's new color grading tool, where I'm gonna be sharing how it works, some hidden ninja tricks and keyboard shortcuts, and also how it can integrate into your editing workflow. Let's dive in. In two of my most viewed videos, we went in detail about both of my favorite tools in Lightroom, curves and HSL sliders. But Lightroom's new tool packs a punch. This is the coolest new feature added to Lightroom in a few years. The update called Color Grading can be found in the Develop panel underneath the HSL tab, and it replaces the previous split toning controls. Now, if you previously used split tone or had presets that utilized it, don't freak. Color grading is 100% compatible with the old split toning, meaning any images that previously had split tone will look exactly the same. And older presets using split tone will still work as well. The settings will simply be converted into the new highlight and shadow color wheels of the new feature. Personally, I always found split tone to be a bit of a clunky tool since it only allowed you to tint the shadows and highlights and lacked options to be able to really finesse the look. For any major color toning across the various tones of the image, I preferred using the much more powerful curves. But this new tool has a similar function of color toning your image by adding a specific color to various tones but it changes the game with the addition of being able to grade mid-tones in addition to the highlights and shadows. And Adobe also added some sliders that allow for that extra refinement. So let's take a quick peek at how it works. One of the coolest things about color grading is how it features radial color wheels, similar to those used by powerful video editing software. To many photographers, this may feel a bit foreign at first, so I imagine it's gonna be met with some resistance, but I can tell you the benefits outweigh the learning curve, since color wheels are known for making editing so much faster and more intuitive. Inside the tool, we have icons along the top that control our view. The first three-way option allows us to see and adjust all three color wheels all at the same time the midtones, the shadows, and the highlights. And we can also come into them individually shadows, midtones, and highlights, which give us the same controls. It just allows us to see them in a bit larger view. And then the last icon is our global color wheel, which we'll talk about in a second. So popping back over to our midtones, to adjust the color on our color wheel, we have two controls, an outer control and an inner control. The inner control allows us to adjust both the saturation and hue of the color at the same time. And the outer color wheel allows us to adjust just the hue by sliding it along the outside of the color wheel, keeping the saturation the same. To reset any of the adjustments made, you can right click in the center of the wheel and choose the one you wanna reset, or you can just double click midtones and that'll reset it back to our original image. So after you've dialed in the basic adjustments for your image and gotten a nice clean look, this tool will now allow you to color grade and stylize your photo to really make it yours. So for instance, if I wanted to add a bit of warmth to the mid-tones of this image, which is where the skin tones live, I could drag the hue around the color wheel to find the right shade of orange or yellow to get my desired look. Holding down the Option key will slow down the movement along the hue for finer control. And after we find the hue we like, holding down Shift will keep the hue the same, just adjusting the saturation up or down. The last keyboard shortcut is, say I have the saturation where I want it, but I just wanna shift the hue. We can hold down Command or Control key and adjust it along the hue, keeping the saturation the same. So after I've added some warmth into my midtones, I can do the same with the shadows area, coming in and adding a blue or a green tint into the shadows, finding the hue I want and adjusting the saturation to taste. I think it's important to note here that you don't need to select a color for every wheel. It just depends on the final look that you're going for. Many times with the original split tone tool, I would only add a tint into the shadows. And for this image, I prefer adding tint to just those midtones in the shadows, leaving the highlights alone. So if you love the old tool, you can still create similar effects by just skipping the midtone wheel. But for this image, I'm gonna do shadows and the midtones. Next, let's talk about the slider controls. You'll notice a little arrow over by the preview on off button. 
If we toggle this down, it reveals a hidden hue and saturation slider. These are simply another way of controlling the hue and saturation of your color wheel. You'll see if I drag the hue, it'll move it around the wheel. Adobe added these so we have another option for controlling these settings as it might be a bit more comfortable initially since it's similar to how the HSL panel works and therefore more familiar. But over time, using the color wheel is going to be a much faster way of editing and selecting and experimenting with different colors. So I encourage you to definitely try that out and learn it. So we'll go ahead and toggle that up since it's the same thing. And then next is our luminance slider. The addition of the luminance slider allows us to adjust the brightness or darkness targeting based on different tonal ranges. The brightness of just those midtones or coming into the highlights or shadows, we can target those areas specifically. And though you have this ability in different parts of Lightroom, where this really comes in handy when color grading is allowing you to work really quickly to adjust the brightness or the darkness based on what you need for color grading that part of the image. For example, coming into the shadows, oftentimes when I color grade in curves, I'll lift the blacks of the image slightly before adding a color tint. This brings the black to more of a dark gray, which allows it to take on more of that color. So if I were to bring up the saturation so you can kind of see what I'm doing a little bit better, if we were to lift the luminance of the shadows, you're going to see more of that color coming in versus if it was a pure black, it won't hold color. So having this luminance slider right here is super powerful to allow us to work really quickly rather than having to go back and forth between different tools within Lightroom. So let's bring that back up a bit and bring our saturation back down. Next are our blending and balance sliders. Similar to the previous split tone adjustments, the balance slider is a way of telling Lightroom how to interpret the data of the image and how much of it to count as highlights versus shadows. For instance, if I wanted to bring in more blue, I could slide to the left and it will treat more of the image as living in the shadows. Or if I wanted it to be more towards the highlights, I could bring it the opposite direction. Here's another image where I was playing around with the blues and those shadows and that warm sunrise coming across and skimming across the ground. If you were to shift it this way, we bring in even more of those shadow tones and shifting it this way towards the right, we're bringing in more of those warm, mid-tones that I added to the image. So as you can see, balance is doing just that. It's balancing those different tones within your image. And by playing around with this tool, you'll create completely different looks. Now on its own, this tool is okay, but it does lack a bit of control. So to fix that, Adobe added a new slider called blending. What the blending slider allows us to do is control how the three colors, the midtones, the shadows, and the highlights overlap and in a sense blend together. When the blending slider is all the way at zero, it is going to minimize the amount of overlap between the different colors, creating a harder transition between the color tones, especially for colors that live on the opposite ends of the color wheel. For instance, how I have here, shadows that are in the blue and highlights that are more in those yellow tones. You're gonna have a less soft gradation between the color tones. So if we go really extreme here so we can really see what's going on um, between those colors. You can see now that the colors are very separate. They're not really being blended together at all. So we have a pure cyan and we have that pure yellow. And if we were to instead slide it all the way to the right at 100%, it increases the overlap to create a smoother transition between the colors. And this in essence blends the colors together, similar to if you were mixing paint colors. So we're getting a bit more greens in the photo because it's blending that blue and that yellow together uh, to create a smoother gradient. By putting the value at 100, you also get the old split tone look. So if you want the split tone look, Set it to 100 and just tweak the shadows and the highlights, ignoring the midtones. But by default, this is set to 50. And this is what I feel will work a lot better for most portraits since it's giving a nice smooth gradation between the colors without blending them together too much where it's impacting the overall color of the image. So this is gonna work best, I think, in most scenarios. So that's how the different sliders work and also how the three-way color wheel works. 
And last but not least, I wanted to touch on the global color wheel. The global color wheel is more of a global adjustment across the entire image, saturation and hue. And it's essentially just adding a color tint across the whole photo, similar to if you were to put a colored gel or filter on your lenses. But where this can come in handy is if you want to globally warm or cool your photo. And I actually really love it for adding a bit of a sun-kissed glow to my images. So by putting it and bringing it into like more of a yellow and lifting the luminance on it a bit, we can get a bit of a sun-kissed glow. We're able to add a bit of a more stylized warm tint to our image than merely bringing up the temperature in the basics panel. This is something I've already saved out as a quick preset for myself. As you can see, it's very subtle. I used it on this image here, just adding a little bit of that sun-kissed glow. So the final thing that you might be wondering is when would I use color toning versus curves or HSL? And is this meant to replace the color toning tools inside of Lightroom? Since we're working with raw images, these tools are all essentially doing similar things by adjusting colors across the different tones of our photo. They're just doing them in different ways, making them helpful for adjusting different things. Because the old split tone tool lacked fine tune control, before I would often go into curves to tint the shadows in my photos by lifting the green, then lifting the blue a bit, mixing colors together to get the exact color I wanted into the shadows. Now, if I have a specific color, I want to tint the shadows, the midtones, or the highlights, I have the option of using the color grading tool instead. And this allows for a much faster and easier adjustment to tint across different tones of the image. That said, Tone Curves is still a very powerful tool that will stay within my workflow. And HSL is more for adjusting specific hues across different specific colors in your image. So they're, they're used for different things, uh, but as kind of a final step in my workflow, I will be adding the color grading tool when I'm wanting to add a bit more of a tint as the finishing touch of my photo. I'm gonna be sharing a full breakdown of how I'm incorporating this into my editing process soon, so be sure to subscribe. It's one of the best ways that you can support my little channel and it will also help you stay in the loop for future videos, including the full editing tutorial incorporating this new feature, as well as the next video sharing some cool new updates you'll wanna know inside of Photoshop 2021. Adobe's been unloading some craziness on us this month and I am here for it. So that's the new color grading tool in Lightroom 2021. What do you think? Will you be adding this to your editing workflow? I'd love to know, share in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.